you pop your top and how you lose your cool and how you look at me too say why Hi darlings and welcome back to another wine Wednesday. Listen, I'm so okay to move that because it's in my frame. I don't want that in my frame. I am standing on business, okay? I'm standing on business because you guys have, have, have given me oof and the drive to do this. Uh, last week wine, last week's wine Wednesday rather, did so well. 40, how many, wait, I'll tell you now. Woo! That was loud, I'll tell you now. 51k views in two days 51,000 views in two days i wonder what i said but also guys i saw i saw i saw this little clip on tiktok if you are a true subscriber and you're a true darling i wouldn't i don't think you would you would probably have malicious intent to take my clip and put it on tiktok but the problem comes when you take half of what i said and put it on tiktok now the whole people are just like mm, why would she say that without context you know what i'm saying so i just I, i'll never be able to stop people from taking my stuff and sharing it on other platforms but don't you think it's 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 a little bit malicious if you're gonna take smaller clips of what i said and you put it on another page and now people don't have reference don't have anything and then now i'm being attacked you know so i think true darlings will never do that but anyway, but yeah, um, we're back again. Another Wine Wednesday. I am, I am standing on business, okay? So we're back again. Another Wine Wednesday. Hello, hi. If you're new here, my name is Polly Kabashi. If you're a returning subscriber, hey, darling, and welcome back home. Um, I'm not feeling well. I don't know if you guys can pick up on my voice. I'm not feeling well. I'm on antibiotics as well because I have a throat infection. So your girl is on juice today. But... You can go get yourself some wine. Let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. Let's have fun. Let's. I love how you guys are so involved with Wine Wednesday as well because the conversation does not stop at just me talking. You guys actually have discussions underneath in the comment section. I love that so much. Wow, my earring fell. Sorry. I love that so much. So can we just continue having the conversations? Can we continue giving each other advice? Can we continue... Just loving on each other, you know what I'm saying? So whatever I say doesn't have to stop here. We can just be, you know, we, we can be good. We can be giving each other advice in the comment section. And like I said, I'm not going to ask any more questions until I'm tan, done. Right? Oh, tan, tan. Until I'm done with the questions that you guys have for me. But let's not waste any time. Let's run and get straight into the questions that the darlings sent to me. The first one is, what is your advice for a woman who is under 25? I'm turning 30 this year, okay? I've, I've done, I've, I've lived, I've partied, I've grooved, I've done, I, I think I've, I, I, that is, I've done everything. If you follow me for a long time, then you know that we, and by we, I mean me and my darlings, me and my subscribers, whatever you want to call them, we have gone through videos study sneaky links we have gone through videos of dating apps we have gone through we have gone through the absolute most okay we have been we have been honest on this on this uh, channel we have been we have been honest with each other about everything every life experience whatever all i can say is i think i said it on my um on my get ready with me for the brutal fruit event um taking back my feminine energy i said be private romanticize your life and i don't remember the other two that i said but honestly speaking 25 is your 20s actually your 20s are for fun your 20s are for learning your 20s are for mistakes your 20s are for not having your shit together you know so if you are feeling like you're 25 and you really don't have a business whatever you seeing social media is the number one thing that will lead our young woman to to fall or to not or to not believe that they're on the right path or to not believe that they're doing great for themselves because of what they see on social media because you're seeing another 23 year old driving a range rover you're seeing you don't even know where that sort of source of income is coming from you know what i'm saying now you're putting pressure on yourself to be having all of these things you're going about them the wrong way and now you're doing this you're doing that in which you know what you're doing which i'm not going to judge you for but i just feel like stay in your lane your things are coming your time is coming i know this sounds so cliche and 
um, if you are not a religious person, especially a Christian believing person or you or you're what's this, you don't practice Christianity, it's fine. I'm not gonna harbor you with such information, but if you are a Christian and you're watching this, let God be at the center of your life. I know our parents told us, I know our parents were singing it in our ears every single day, God this, God that, but as I grow up, I finally understand why my mother used to say, God this, God that, I finally get it, you know what I'm saying? So let God be the center of your life, let him guide you, let him tell you, before you do something, go to God first and say, God, I want to do one, two, three, what do you think about this? You know what I'm saying? Don't plan and then after that you're going to go to God and be like, I hope it works, no. First, go to God and say, God, I want to do one, two, three. And then after that, you can do your things. You know what I'm saying? So let God be at the center of your life. Romanticize your life. Love yourself so much and be selfish. Be selfish with your time. Be selfish with your energy. Be selfish, be selfish with how you do things in a sense of don't just allow anybody to come into your personal space and tell you what to do. Anybody to come into his personal, personal space and cause you chaos and anxiety. No. Be selfish. Be selfish with your 20s. Have fun in your 20s. Don't think, Sana, just because that boy said he loves you and he's 20 and he's in varsity, but he's dragging you through filth. You think he's the one and now you're crying every day in your 20s? Your 20s are for fun. Your 20s are for, 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 for picking and choosing if you want to go out on a date. If you don't want to go out on a date, your 20s are for you. You know, obviously some people's parts are different. But I don't want you to now look at people's path and be like, okay, that's the path I'm supposed to be on. No, enjoy your path. If yours is taking longer, it's fine. That's just how life is supposed to be. Not all of us are going to have everything that we want by 25. I'm almost certain all of us when we were in high school, we like, by 25, I'm going to be married, have kids, be a doctor, drive a Mercedes. No, life doesn't work that way. Especially if you're not rooted in Christ, you know? So be selfish. Your 20s are for you, your 20s are for fun, your 20s are for knowing and, and, and learning who you are. Your 20s are for romanticizing your life so that if anybody, be it a male, be it a female, be it a platonic relationship, be it a relationship relationship, be it a friendship relationship, those people are not going to come and give you half ass love because you know how to love yourself. You know, you are selfish with your time. You know what I'm saying? So, if you're not going to put yourself first in your 20s, Sana, they're going to drag you through filth. So, 20s are for you. 20s are for fun. 20s are for learning yourself. 20s are for knowing what you like, what you don't like. What you like in men, what you don't like in men. What you like in your career, what you don't like in your career. I mean, I was 22 when I decided, how old was COVID? 21, how old was I? 2021, how old was I? Was I 24? 25, 26, 27, 28. No, I was 23 during 2021. Wait. 2021, I was 27. Ooh, my math wasn't my thing. 2021, I was 27. Yeah, 2021, I was 27. 2021, I decided that I want to be a YouTuber. So you see, my career changed because I was working at a law firm from 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I worked at a law firm for, yeah, for like... 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, for like, I think five years, the one year I was working at Vanity. Yeah, but at 27 years old, I decided to be a YouTuber. 27, 28, 29. I'm turning 30. I've been a YouTuber for four years. I've been doing content creation for four years, you know? So my life changed in such a dramatic way, but I allowed the change because I was still young. I was still in my 20s and I can do whatever the hell I want. You know what I'm saying? So be unapologetic about what you want to do, about who you want to be. Be selfish. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to say this in English. You must tell yourself no. Yeah, actually, you must tell yourself that you're the baddest bee to ever live. You know, people will be like, yo, you love you. Yes, if you want to you 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 know what I'm saying? So 20 years are your selfish years. Do whatever the heck you want, but remain focused. Know what the end goal is and focus on the main priorities of your life. That's all I can say, you know. The next one is, I'm about to get into a polygamous marriage. I'm scared to share the news with my friends as they will judge me. I think more than anything, you have decided that you want to get into this marriage. Hence why you were you already saying, I'm about to get into a polygamous marriage. What do you care about what your friends are going to say? Are your friends going to marry you? Are your friends going to love you? Are your friends going to provide for you? Are your friends going to do anything for you but be your friends? So now we, 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 we 
care so much about outside validation that it, it messes up with our minds when it has to come to such situations or such instances where you are so scared about what your friends are going to say about a life that you are choosing. Why are they judging you? Are they your friends? Why are they judging you? If, if yes, so people are going to have their opinions. Friend, why are you getting into a polygamous marriage? Why this? Why that? Why the? But that's your decision. You know what I'm saying? I've learned as friends because I've lost, I've lost friends in in my life because maybe but mostly with me i'm very strict i realize that i'm very strict so if you're gonna come with nonsense sign up we're not gonna get along very well you and i you know so there was one friend of mine that i lost because she wanted to go and stay at a man's house a man that is paying for her flat the man is not staying with her the man wants to pay for an apartment that he doesn't stay at what if one day he just wakes up and he's like, I don't want to pay for that apartment anymore. First of all, you don't work. What are you going to do? We stopped being friends because I gave advice. Apparently, I was jealous. So, sometimes your friends can give you mad, 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 mad information. You know? So, for me, I would say follow your heart. If your friends do not appreciate that you are going into a... A polygamous marriage if your friends don't like that you're going into polygamous marriage then so be it that's your life at the end of the day that is what makes you happy you know i can give you advice yeah fine sharp friend why are you into, into a polygamous marriage but that is what you want no so what your friend thinks that is none of their business that is none of your business at the end of the day at the end of the day you must make yourself happy i just talked about your 20s now be selfish also you need to be selfish and make yourself happy put yourself first your happiness matters more than anything. If that man makes you happy, if the man's first wife, I don't know if you're going to be a second or third, if Bomam Kulu, let me call it, are making you happy and are happy that you're going to join their family, then so be it. They're going to be your new friends. Friends that are not happy for you in life, when you are happy yourself, I will never understand those people. So don't mind what they say. You are happy and that's what you should be focusing on. Focusing on yourself, focusing on your marriage, focusing on building your future with your new husband. But more than anything, be happy. Happiness, your happiness comes first more than anything, you know. The next one is, should I date a childhood's friend's ex that has been long pursuing me? Should I date a childhood's friend's ex that has been long pursuing me? So I have a very weird feeling about dating your, your ex's your friend's exes. Like that just rubs him off the wrong way. That looks like you've been waiting for him. Even if he's been wanting you, son, now what happened to girl code? Like what happened to girl code? Does it, do you, it, it, it's giving, I've been waiting for my chance. As much as he's been waiting for his chance with you. You know that thing where a guy comes and they initially wanted you, but you say no, then they go for your friend and your friend says yes. And then now it's just like, Have you been in such a situation? So it's like second, you second preference. To me personally, I would never, because it's almost like your second preference. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Why didn't you come for me first? You want to come for me after? No, 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 no. Also, now, your friend, you are very shady going after your friends. It's just because it's been pursuing you for a long time. Guys, and mind you, this is from a personal standpoint. I personally wouldn't do it. If you want to do it, then fine. You can go do it. I'm not judging you, but personally for me, I just feel like it's it's a bit shady. It's giving, I've been waiting for this. My chance is here. Yes, feel it. It's here. No. No, 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 no. So, I don't think you should go for him. I don't think you should go for him. But also, guys, I may be standing in between you and your marriage. <laughs> So pray about it, Sana. Pray about it. Ask God to give you guidance and see what he says. If he says no, then it's no. If he says yes, then go ahead. Because in this life, you will never know basically what, what the Lord brings or what the universe brings if, if you believe in the universe. You just don't know what can be something that is going to bring you so much joy and happiness. You know what I'm saying? So I can be here. Connie can be here telling you, yeah, I don't date him because it's weird. And then your brain is like, date the next thing we're finding out that you're getting married. Because this guy was supposed to be the love of your life. But because you went for your friend first and then you go after. You know? So these are the type of things that you pray about. Ask God. Because obviously it's a relationship. Why are you not asking God first about the relationship before you get into it? Like, ask God, Lord, I want to get into a relationship with somebody. Is this person right? Show me their intentions before we move any other step. Exactly. How do you deal with anxiety? That's a very good question. 
Um, I've never been an I've never been an anxious person. I only had one account where I had a panic attack in Ghana. I don't know what happened. Even today, me and Maria are still trying to figure out what happened. I think just being in that place, and I've been there before, and I was with somebody, and I'm just like, I'm here again, you know, and that person is not here. So I just, I just went into it, you know. So that was the first time I ever experienced something like that. I've never ever experienced anxiety to such an extent. Obviously, I get anxiety to go and speak just like now. It wasn't anxiety. It's was just like, you know, jitters. You're just a little bit scared. You, you know, you're anxious. Well, it is inside. You go there, you speak, you get into the hang of it and you're fine. I've never been an anxious person like that to, to an extent where I'm just crazy but i've recently started doing this thing wherever i'm going to some place where i don't know those people or i'm going to an event or i'm going to whatever i will sit in my car and pray god please help me be able to speak to these people in a correct manner please help me to be able to converse with these people in a correct manner please help me to be able to to just get in there and be myself oh also in a shot of vodka helps <laughs> Oh, it's in 1942. I'm very bad because whenever I am drunk, I'm such a bubbly person. I don't drink like that anymore. But I used to be such a bubbly person. I used to be a fun person. I'm the girl that you'll find at the club and you'll give me a bag and I will guard that bag with my life. This is my stranger's bag. If you touch my stranger's bag, it's on sight. I will fight for your bag. Okay? So... Anxiety is a is a thing of a past for me. You guys remember I even asked you if I should take pills for it, and some of you were like, "Yes, you should." Some of you were like, "No, you shouldn't." But ever since I started praying for myself and started praying for me to get over it, yes, it's not as crazy as it used to be. That whenever I go to a place, I'm scared to go to an event because there won't be people that I know. But I've realized that no man, this thing is in my head. It really is in my head. Because when I get there, I'm fine. We start talking, we start chatting, which is fine. But now. Whenever I get to a place, I'll just sit in my car, say a little prayer, get in there, and I'll be fine. You know, let's let's first trust God with things before we move into the scientific aspects of things, which are pills and stuff and stuff. Let's test God first and see, you know? So, I mean, I wanted to go into pills and stuff, and then sometimes I'm like, mm -mm, test God first, pray, pray about this. You've never had a panic attack before in your entire life, and then now all of a sudden you're going to have one. No, babe. No, 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 no. So... I have centered my life around Christ that every single do I every single thing I do I pray so that you know what I'm saying it can I, I can be okay mentally physically spiritually I can be okay so I can take on any task without feeling like I'm about to die you know um the next one is I've been single forever and I don't know if I should be going out meeting people or to wait on God I absolutely love this one because somebody you guys remember um they came for me on my previous vlog um i'm gonna read to you what this lady said the way i've been looking for this thing <laughs> so somebody came for me or well, the question was i've been single forever i don't know if i should be going out meeting people or to wait on god right and then, you know, on my previous um, vlog, I don't know if you guys saw it. Well, not all of you saw it. Um, I said, do you need anything, love? Right? And then this other girl came for me. She's like, I am misleading people. I am misleading the young girls. I said, I'm celibate. I said, I'll never date again. I'm like, when did I say that? When did I say I'll never date again? When did I say I don't want to date? When did I say I hate men? Okay, we, we, we do, but like... When did I say all of And then she went on and on and on about how I should put God at the center of my life. Blah, blah, blah. I said, wait. First of all, if we don't date as Christians, how are we going to get married? Is God going to take a man and put him in front of my window and say, he is the one. He is the one for you. Marry him now. No, I have to leave my house. He will not come and hijack me in this. I have to leave my house. I have to leave. I have to look pretty. I have to look get out of my house and socialize with people, be in church, be in wherever. I have to leave my house at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And then someone said, what's wrong with being with a man? I'm a born again Christian and I have a man and yes, we celebrate and he is also a Christian. Dating is not forbidden for Christians. Otherwise, how will we marry? Exactly. 
of course how would you date how you date is based on biblical standards but people must not assume that you won't be christ-centered even in your relationship if you get into one you know what i'm saying if you get into a relationship you can set standards so now we're not gonna have sex until we're married we're not gonna have sex until one two three no so we're not gonna sin one two three one two three that is what you are centering you centering god around your your your, your dating life you know what i'm saying so it's best to date somebody that you align with if you're a christian date a christian date somebody that you go to church with so that so that, so that they understand that if you come and say no sex before marriage they don't like huh why because they know it's written in the bible they know you know so yo the way this person dragged me fulfilled i was just like so if i'm a christian i'm not supposed to be with a man because i'm sinning how do you know that i'm sinning are you with me in the house do you know what i'm saying are you with us in the house are you with us wherever that we are to know that we are sinning you know so if you are going if you're a christian or a born again christian yes you have to date according to biblical standards you guys heard me i said i'm going to be celibate until, I, until i'm married until i find a man that i'm going to love watch, 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 watch. if you are a christian you meet somebody, you decide, it's okay, you guys are going to be serious, you guys are going to get married, and then you have sex. That's your business. Nobody is supposed to judge you. So now there's a lot of Christians here who, are, who had babies, who still are having babies, and they are not married. I'm not judging them. That's none of my business. That's their and God's business. They're happily married. You have to understand that there's people also that don't want to get married. So just because they're Christians and then they say, actually, I don't want to get married. Guys, I'm not the type of Christian that judges. I will look and I'll open my eyes, but I will not judge. Because that's not your place. You are not holier than thou. Throw the first stone. Oh, I'm the last person to throw the stone. So because I, I am the last person to throw the stone. It would ricochet. It will do me. Dead. Gone. Boo. Ghost pastor. So, you know? So, no. I will not judge. But if you're a Christian and you tell yourself that you want to date, then your dating standards should be the biblical ones. No sex before marriage. No sinning. What shall I do? My blasphemy. Hey, hey, hey. What shall I do? But I mean, all I know is we are not perfect. So, when I, if you want to date my love, go and date a Christian. Sit him down and tell him, this is your life. You're gonna be gonna take the biblical route. If I'm not for you, then you know that person is not for you. But also, we hear stories of young women. I saw this other woman. I follow a lot of Christian, a lot of Christian trips because now I saw this woman. She said she started dating this guy in high school. Then they 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 grew, they grew together. College, what shall I Are they working now? They haven't been married. And then the guy did not believe in God. And then she started going to church going to, 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 to pray every Sunday, the boy would stay at home, and then all of a sudden one day he went to church with her and now they both saved. God places people in our lives for a reason, guys. You may be in a situation where that's trying to think, whenever you're about to start with something, pray for that situation, pray for it. There was a woman at our church, a five assembles of God. She used to come to church, she had a testimony, she used to come to church, her husband was a drunkard, her husband was a person that smokes, he didn't believe in God, he was this, he was that, he was everything. And then she would, she said, I would buy him alcohol. I would buy him alcohol and every time I buy that alcohol, I'd pray for that alcohol. I said, Gulu Gulu, whenever that alcohol gets into his stomach, let it turn into poison so that he hates that alcohol. And then that man was like, hi man, my name is Jola Boobu, my name is Jola Boobu, my name is Jola Boobu. When I say Jola Boobu, the alcohol is ugly, sorry if you don't know English. My Jola Boobu, alcohol is ugly. So that man was like, every time I drink this alcohol, it's ugly, man. Every time I drink this alcohol, it's ugly. I said, no, man, I don't want to drink anymore. That's how he stopped drinking. His wife saved him. I was in church today. If you're at Rema today, on the 14th of April, Rema Renberg for the 1030 service, Gabriel said, you are here to change people's lives. That's when I knew it was and as much as so much has happened in my life, good or bad, I'm here to change people's lives. And I'm so happy that I managed to do it at such a young age. Tender age of 29. I'm, I'm still a teenager. At the tender young age of 29, adolescence, I am able to change people's lives. I am able to preach the gospel. I am able to tell people about God and what he's done and his mercy and his love and his graciousness upon our lives. I am able to do all of those things. So, when a relationship could be someone's turning point, you could be someone's saving grace. You know what I'm saying? So, pray about it first, you know? And I'm telling you now, as a Christian date, oh, babe, date, dates, or else, how are you going to find a husband? How are you going to, God, 
No, no. So pray about the situation before it goes anywhere. Ask God, God, this man wants to be in my life. Please help me have the discernment to know that he's here for the good or he's here for the bad. He's here to be a uh, good a good person. He's here to be my husband. Did he send her? Yes or no? Take the correct box. Take the correct box. Did he send her? Yes or no? Take the correct box. Talk more, my baby. I'll pick her. So, exactly. So ask God. God, is this person here for a good time or a long time? If I get called for a long time, did it block did it and throw away the phone exactly so the next one is an ex called to apologize for treating me bad five years after the relationship ended i had an ex do that as well I just think some people grow up and they mature and they see what's in norm and they actually treat that girl very badly. Let me call and apologize. Guys would be like, no man, sorry, girls would be like, no, I actually treat that guy badly. I need to apologize. And especially now, say maybe now I found the Lord and I realized that, no man, I actually treated an ex of mine very badly. I'm going to call them and be like, no, listen, I found Christ and I feel like I need to apologize to you for how I treated you so badly in our relationship. Will you forgive me? It's so nice knowing that somebody is correcting their mistake and they've seen where they've hurt you and they finally decide to look bad. Let me just apologize to this person, you know what I'm saying? It would feel so good. Some of you know, we Mara. Some of us would be like, I I forgive you. It's fine, you can go. You know what I'm saying? That closure that you've been longing for because as especially women, we have this thing where we will hover hover over why. Why did it break up? Why did he cheat on me? Why this? Why this? We'll have all these questions without realizing what's he. It was never us. Let me not say women also. Also men. If a woman cheats on you, you'll be like, why did she cheat on me? I was giving her everything. I was giving her the love. I was giving her the money. I was giving her everything. Why did she cheat on me? It was never you. It was her all along. Also vice versa. If a person cheats on you guys, it's not you. Never, ever, ever, ever think it's you. It's always them. It's either low self-esteem. Or they just can't control themselves. They have to. Everybody. So if a person cheats, it's never you, my love. It's never you. If a guy cheats or if a girl cheats and comes back and says, I cheated because of you. Oh, Oh, so, so quick. Father, do that. That's been umlashi because there's no way you're going to cheat because of me. If you had a problem with me, we'll sit down and talk about it. If you have a problem with how I do things, we'll sit down and talk about it. If you had a... I don't know, but if, if there's a problem, let's sit down and talk about it rather than you go and start having another relationship. Guys, relationships are always ruined by not communicating. Why, if you have a problem, you don't need to come and sit me down and tell me what's happening? You want to go outside and talk to the dead person. You know? So, I think accept the, forgive, the, the, the apology, sorry, and forgive him and just move on. Especially if this person hurts you like a lot. Don't don't have all that. Just just let it go. Accept the apology. Thank you so much. Move on. Don't even open space for friendship because hey, he might be coming back for round two. So let's move on. <laughs> right? The last one is how do you know it's time to choose your peace in relationships or friendships? You know that it's time to choose your peace in relationships or friendship. When the situation starts giving you anxiety and confusion and you are coming here to ask me what to do and i'm not saying this in a bad way please don't get me wrong once you leave a friendship or relationship and you start seeking outside advice just know that it's not working it's not working guys in a place where there's no peace you're not supposed to be there if you are in a place and there's no peace you are not supposed to be there if you're in a place and there's confusion and there's anxiety, you're not supposed to be there. I said this the last time, I'll say it again. God will never put you in a place or put you in a position where you're confused and you're anxious. Wherever you're supposed to be, it is peaceful. Wherever you are supposed to be, it is peaceful. 
because that's where you belong a place where you're not supposed to be there'll be anxiety peace there'll be anxiety confusion stress every day you're just stressed i'm gonna make a prime example i was working at a law firm i was crying every day waking up was such a drag because i hated it i hated it so much i hated that job so much i hated that environment i hated i hated i hated i hated that place so much even today i have so much hatred for that place also the people that were there i don't hate them but i dislike them so much i, I want nothing to do with any of those people there any of them they were in each other's business it was, a, it was a small law firm they were in each other's business they were oh it was just a very toxic environment i would die a thousand deaths before I could take anybody I love and put them in such a situation, you know. Once I left the law firm, I've never been at peace so much in my life because I'm doing what I love. It doesn't feel like a job, doesn't feel like a chore, it just feels right. You know, it's peaceful. I love it. So that's how I know that this job for me is God's gift to me on earth. Because it's so peaceful. Where you are supposed to be, it's gonna be peaceful. It's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna feel like harmony. But where you're not supposed to be, uh, it's always going to be noise. There's always going to be noise, confusion, anxiety, waking up every morning, feeling like, no. So once a friendship starts giving you those things, once a relationship starts giving you those things, that's when you know it's time to go. And the, the, the hard thing about relationships is it's so hard letting go, guys. It's so hard letting go of a relationship. A relationship that once served you. And the thing, well, the reason why it's so hard is because you, you look at the what-ifs. Oh, what if he changes? What if we're this? What if we're that? What if we're this? No. Selfishness. Putting yourself first. Putting yourself, leaving a toxic environment just because you know that it does not, it does not feed your soul. It's not good for your soul. It's not good for your heart. Every day you're crying. That time you're 22 years old. You're being stressed by a muzi. Muzi learned because of your human resource or clear line wondering every day. You see him every day with different girls and you're telling yourself that's the love of your life. Oh, guys. Begetela, I'm a power ranger. I want to ring Lea. Lea, I'm a power ranger. Yeah. I'm a power ranger. Yeah. They will see you are not going anywhere where we have a Imagine it. No. Be selfish, love. If you just see that this thing is no longer serving me, I'm out. I can't be here sitting and thinking things are going to change when they evidently aren't changing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think more than anything, I pray for discernment. Once something does not feed my spirit, feed my soul, I'm questioning it every day, I'm out. I won't sit there just because I feel like what if this person changes? What if the situation gets better? No, I don't, I don't deal with what ifs. I keep it moving guys I wanna, if there's one thing 2023 20, 2022 20, 2023 20, <coughs> i told myself i'll keep it moving be in friendship be relationships i'll keep it moving i think that's why also my relationship my ex my 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 previous relationship hurt me so much because i let go of something that i loved Whereas I could have said, what if, what if, what if, what if, I just let it go. And that was hurting the most because letting go of something because you have to focus on your journey with Christ. That thing was not filling your spirit, your heart, whatever. Letting go of something or someone that didn't even do anything to you. But kunem sindo. It's just loud. It's always noisy. Every day, yeah, liwa. I can't. Guys, I'm not, I'm not a person that can argue a lot. I'll say one, two, three words, but when I see that I'm not getting through to you, ah, uh, it's done, it's chai. I can't do it anymore. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll argue here and there. I'll tell you my point, you'll tell me your point, but if I see that we are not getting, we're not understanding each other on the same page, I'm out. I can't do the whole back and forth thing, no. I think that's where Gula, I used to fight it up because I just felt like since we can't speak, I see it right Like, since we can't speak, let's, let's beat each other up, you know? But I've stopped that now. Like, I just walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Just walk away. So, walking away from situations that no longer serve you will save you so much stress in your life. You know? So, yeah. I hope I, hope I answered some of the questions. And, um... Like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move on to any new questions until I finish all of these. I wanna answer each and every single person. So if I haven't answered your question, like don't worry, it's coming and I'll answer it. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all my throat is so painful. 
Mm. I've been talking, it gets dry so quickly. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Wine Wednesday. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Also, um, don't forget to share with your friends. And uh, maybe, just maybe, on my next one, they will send in their questions and we'll decipher it together. Like I said, please don't forget to continue the conversation in the, in the comment section. Let us give each other more advice. Let us love on each other. And with that being said, I will see you guys on my next one. Bye, my darlings. Mm -hmm.